G'day, welcome to Avention. I'm your host, Dom Schramm. Today, we're talking studs, stud selection, stud kits, reasons for studying your horse, and anything else I can think of that has to do with studs. So let's get this stud-filled episode started. G'day, we're talking about studs today. First off, it's important to understand why we use studs in the horse's feet. Well, much like a football player uses cleats, we use them for traction and grip for the horse. Now, not all horses need to have studs. Just because you're going cross country doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have studs in. However, if you're traveling at higher speeds and making tighter turns, they may be useful for you. They can also be useful when you're doing your dressage and show jumping for example, if it's rained and the grass is slippery or frosty. Your first step to take when you want to start using studs in your horse is to ask your farrier to drill and tap holes into the horse's shoes. That leads us on to our next point, having a well-maintained and organized and stocked stud kit. Hey Jimmy. Yeah? I've got a question for you. What's that? What would be in your perfect stud kit? My perfect stud kit. Channing Tatum, James Franco, Brad Pitt. Oh, no, 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 no. Gross. You know what? Never mind. I'll figure it out myself. When it comes to selecting your studs, you've got quite a range to choose from. And really, the conditions that you're going to be riding your horse on are going to be the main factor in affecting what you choose to put in your horse. Uh, this first one right here is what we'd call more of a road stud. It's sort of shallow and not too deep. And that would be more for like loose gravel um, where the ground is quite firm. These next two studs here, you'll notice, are a little bit longer and slightly more pointed. Uh, these are more for what we would call grass studs. And their main purpose is more to penetrate into the roots of the grass, but not necessarily go too deep into the ground. The second one here is a little, bit, a little bit longer, so that's probably more suited for really thick grass. Moving along here, we've got more of a rounded stud that's a little bit longer. Now we're starting to use these more for more wet conditions, so uh, perhaps it's rained and the, the footing feels a little bit deeper. Um, and we want to try to get a little bit more purchase into the ground for the horse. These last two are much more for uh, wet conditions or just really deep soft uh, footing where you want to make sure your horse has the best possible uh, purchase on the ground when he's taking off and running and jumping. So here we've got the four most important tools of the stud kit. Number one, the trusty old hoof pick. I prefer mine to have a brush on one end so that I can clean out any loose dirt or mud. Next along here we've got an adjustable wrench which is necessary for tightening the studs and also taking them out. This third tool, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but uh, I call it the pointy thing. And um, as you can see, it's got a, a pointed tool on, on one side and a wire brush on the other. And it's useful for clearing out any small rocks out of the stud holes. Last but not least, we have the stud tap, and that's uh, used for clearing out the threads inside the actual stud holes. Okay, so we're at the show, ready to go. It's time to get the studs in. Chances are you're going to be doing this with the horse tied up to the side of the trailer or someone's going to hold him for you. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this on the back leg, which is generally the trickier one. First things first, to avoid a lot of hassle, tie the tail up so that you don't have to deal with this in your face the whole time. Make sure your stud kit's close by, you've got all your tools at hand. And away we go. So. Pick up his back leg like so, being sure to support it with your leg and that'll free up one of your hands and keep him nice and secure. Okay, step one, you're going to need a hoof pick and we're going to make sure the foot is nice and clean. Now I've already, here's one I prepared earlier. So get any loose uh, dirt or stuff out of the way. Step two, 
I like to uh, call this my uh, pointy tool. And uh, what you're going to use this, despite this uh, pointed end, to kind of clear out any loose dirt or stones that have built up in your horse's feet. Now, it goes without saying, guys, be careful. The horse's hook foot is underneath there. You don't want to go too deep and uh, accidentally stab him in the foot. So uh, I've already done these ones here, but um, you just use that tool there and the brush on the other end to clear out any loose, any loose dirt. Okay, now a little tip. If you want to save yourself some hassle at the show, you can actually do this the night before and uh, when you're at home and actually stuff the clean holes full of cotton wool or they actually sell some, um, they actually sell pre-made rubber stoppers. And so that when you get to the show, all you gotta do is pop them out and get going. That's just a little tip to save you some time at the show. Okay, next is the tap. Now this is a, what we call a safety tap. It's a, it's a screw-like tool that helps clear the threads inside the holes so that the studs can go in nice and easily. Now, when you screw it in, it uh, takes a little bit of time. So if your horse manages to pull free, we use this safety tap so that if he steps down on it, he's not gonna cause himself any serious injury. Okay, but uh, that's what we prefer. Okay, so when you're going to, to tap the holes, look, take a look on the side, make sure you're nice and flush and gently screw in. Now, it shouldn't take too, too much effort. If you're really having to try and uh, push it in there, chances are you might be a little bit crooked, okay? And it gets to, to the end, you'll feel it gently hit the end, unscrew. Ah, oh, perfect, all right, nice and clean. Now I like to give it a little blow and blow out any of the loose dirt in there. Okay, all right. Okay, next comes the stud. Now today I've just chosen a really small, sharp little grass stud that uh, that would be for, you know, not too, not too seriously slippery conditions. This bit's pretty straightforward. Oh, stand still there, Preston. Okay, and you just gently Screw it in, make sure you're nice and straight, and it should go in like so. All right, perfect. Last tool of the job, an adjustable wrench. Okay, now, when you're about to do this part, you don't wanna be wrenching around and not supporting his hoof because you'll be putting undue pressure on his joints here. So with your other hand, support his hoof, and when you're turning this, Try not to be wrenching on his on his foot too much and just, just putting it onto the onto the shoe. He doesn't have to be so, so super tight, just as tight as you can get it within reason. And there you go. We've got a, a uh, stud in here ready to go. Now, it's up to you whether you use one stud or two studs, but I do recommend whatever you do on one side of the horse, you want a mirror image on the other so that you're not uh, you're not putting any Un, uh, like any uh, undue pressure on one side more than the other. Okay, when it comes time to taking them out, that, that normally is straight after you've finished your, uh, your activity, your cross country or your show jumping or whatever. Um, you wanna get them out straight as, pos as soon as possible because uh, you don't want him to accidentally maybe stand on himself and, and cause injury. So and basically the process is in reverse. Pick his foot up, support his hoof, gently unscrew. And there you have it, Bob's your uncle. Okay, next time you go cross country, you'll know everything you have to do to have your horse correctly studded. Jimmy. Sorry.